Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. And this is question number 10, which is the last question from this Pure Mathematics P3 International A-Level paper from January 2022. And here we have a question which gives us this graph, figure 3. It says, figure 3 shows a sketch of the curve called C with equation x equals y times e to the power of 2y where y is an element of the real numbers, so y can take any value. It says, show that dy dx is equal to y over x times 1 plus 2y. All right, so now, in a question such as this, we want to find dy dx. Normally, we give a, we're given a function with y equals some function of x, and then we can differentiate that depending on the type of function we're given. But here we've got x as some function of y. And to rearrange this to make y this subject is going to be quite difficult because you've got y times e to the power of 2y. So one of the y's is trapped inside the power and the other y's over here. So it's going to become quite complicated to make y the subject of this. So the simplest thing that we could do here is find dx dy. Differentiate x with respect to y. Okay, And then when we've got the answer, we can find the reciprocal of that. And that will be dy dx. So to find dx dy, what we have to do first is we have to um, realize that we have a product of two different functions. Okay, these y and e to the power of 2y. So we have to use the product rule. So I'm going to call the first product y, um, I'm going to call it u. And the second product, e to the power of 2y, I'm going to call it v. e to the power of 2y, I'm going to call it v. And I'm going to differentiate this with respect to y which will give me 1. And I'm going to differentiate this with respect to y, which is going to be, well, it stays the same, but then you multiply by the difference of what's inside it. So using the chain rule, so 2e to the power of 2y. e to the power of something doesn't change when you differentiate it, but you have to also multiply by the differential of the function inside the function. So you multiply by 2 because the differential of 2y is 2 when we differentiate with respect to y. This is different from what we do in P4 when we're differentiating y with respect to x, then we have to write, for example, um, this would become 1 times dy dx. And this would be 2e to the power of 2y times dy dx. That's when we differentiate with respect to x. But here we're differentiating with respect to y. So that's why we don't write down times dy dx or times dy dx, which we do when we're doing implicit differentiation, which comes in P4, when we're differentiating y with respect to x. Here we're differentiating y with respect to y. So that's exactly how we do it. So now, when using the product rule, you're going to multiply these two together and add the product of those two. I always like to go from this way, doing it this way. It's opposite to what you find in the books, but I like to do v times u dash plus u times v dash because that's the same order you have to use when you're doing the quotient rule. And for quotient rule, you're subtracting, so it's important to do the right order. So um, I just like to stick to that order. So I have e to the power of 2y times 1 plus, and I have... Um, 2e to the power of 2y times y. Okay, so that's what that gives you when you differentiate it. Now, it doesn't look anything like what we see here. Okay, however, okay, however, um, what we can see here, so you have um, yeah, e to the power of 2y times y plus 2 times e to the power of 2y times y. That's right, okay. So it doesn't look anything like, as I said, what it's supposed to look like, all right? Um, but what we can do here is we can use a little trick here that we know that x is equal to y times e to the power of 2y because our answer doesn't have e to the power of 2y in it. So we have to eliminate e to the power of 2y from our answer and then write it as a reciprocal. In the end, we're going to put dy dx. But first, I'm going to try and sort out this e to the power of 2y's. We don't have that in our answer. However, I can use this original form here, and I can see if I make e to the power of 2y the subject of this, I have e to the power of 2y is equal to x over y. Right? If I rearrange that. So that means I can replace the e to the power of 2y by x over y. So I say dx dy is going to be, instead of e to the power of 2y, I can write this as x over y plus, and I have 2 times, and I have x over y times y. Okay, so e, e to the power of 2, 2, 2y is x over y. So I can rewrite this 
in this form. Okay, so now what will happen here, the y's will cancel. And I'm left with dx dy is equal to x over y plus 2x. And I can combine this into one fraction so that then I can then find the reciprocal of it because in the end we want dy dx. So if I make this into one fraction, I have to make the denominator here y. So this is going to be x over y plus, and this will be 2xy over y. So that's dx dy. So if I write this now, dx dy, sorry. So dx dy will therefore be under one denominator, y, and this is x plus 2xy, which I can rewrite as well um, by taking out the common factor. Factor So 2 dx dy is going to be x times 1 plus 2y over y. So therefore, I can say dy dx is the reciprocal of this, which is y over x times 1 plus 2y. And that is exactly what we were asked to show. y over x times in brackets 1 plus 2y. y over x brackets 1 plus 2y. So there we have shown very clearly how we get to that. So in these type of questions when it says show that, you have to show your steps very, very clearly. You can't just write any old thing and then say therefore dy dx equals... You know, you have to show your steps clearly, even if you can, for example, see from this stage here. Some, some people might be able to see that that, will, that is going to become this. You have to go through your steps very clearly because these type of questions here where it says show that, it's very important. And the reason why they give you these show that questions is for, for example, part B. You know, you already have things that will help you. Part B won't depend on your answering part A correctly. You can still get the marks fully for part B even though you did part A, for example, you didn't know how to show that in part A, you won't lose all the marks of the questions. That's another thing that's very important in all these type of exams. Always see if you can do part the other parts. If you can't do the first part of the question, in most cases, the second part of the question does not depend on the first part of the question. In the sense that the first part of the question might ask you to show something, and if you weren't able to show it, you can use what they told you to show, in the second part of the question and gain the full marks for that question even though you might not have been able to do part A. So at least for part B you can get the full marks. So don't just give up. When you see a question that you can't do the first part, don't give up on the rest of it. Look to see if you can, you're able to do that. Okay, it's very important. So now we've got dy dx equals y over x times 1 plus 2y and now we're going to go on to part B of this question. Now part B of this question says given that the straight line with the equation x equals k where k is a constant, cuts the curve C exactly at two points, find the range of possible values for k. So what I've drawn here now is this, this line. x equals k is a, a line which is vertical. And it goes to the value of k on the x-axis. Okay, the number k, that's where it passes. So if this is minus 5, for example, this will be x equals minus 5. So this line here, okay... The, it says the straight line x equals k cuts c at exactly two points. So the points that it would cut c at would be, you can see that from this point here up to just before the asymptote, which is at x equals 0. X, x equals 0, we can see here, there seems to be an asymptote where this x gets closer and closer to y, but it doesn't touch it. It seems to be an asymptote here. So we can see here, that when x is less than 0, up to this point here, where this line is a tangent to the curve, at this point, this line is a tangent to the curve, all right, at that point over there, at that point there, up to that point, um, so just after that point, up to x is equal to 0, just before x equals to 0, between those two values, there will be... Um, two points where this curve and this line will intersect. Okay, if you go further here, they'll only intersect at one point. It'll only intersect at one point. From here, it will intersect at two points, from this point up to that point. So we know that when x is less than zero is one of the um, parts of the range of values, but the other part of the range, oops, the other part of the range is where the curve 
is a tangent to x equals k. All right, so where x equals k, sorry, is a tangent to the curve. Now, if the tangent to the curve is vertical like this, that means the gradient of the curve at that point is infinite, has an infinite gradient. Okay, it's just the gradient will be a vertical line. Now, when does that happen? Well, we know that the gradient of a line is, the gradient of the line is the change in y over the change in x. So when the change in x is equal to zero, that's when you're going to have a vertical gradient. So for example, if you have a point here and a point here on this line, if I find the gradient of this line, you're going to have the change in y, which is going to be whatever that, you know, the difference between those two points are, over the change in x, which is zero. So when we have our dy dx, this is like the gradient. dy dx is equal to y over x times 1 plus 2y. So when x equals k is the gradient, okay, when the gradient uh, is the tangent, sorry, is the tangent, and x equals k is the tangent to the curve. Therefore, the the gradient is undefined. It's infinite, you could say. Undefined. Which will happen when the denominator of this is equal to zero. Which is when you can say x times 1 plus 2y is equal to zero. So this denominator, when that's zero... Uh, that's when you'll have an infinite gradient, when it will be a vertical uh, line, the tangent. So that's when x equals 0, okay? And then also that's when 1 plus 2y equals 0. So that's when 2y is equal to minus 1 and y is equal to negative a half, all right? So when does y equal negative a half? What's the value of x when y equals negative a half? Okay, so that's that point here, basically. Right? When does y equal negative a half? Well, when x is equal to negative a half, because you know x is equal to um, y times e to the power of 2y. So it's negative a half times e to the power of 2 times negative a half. Okay, so that gives you when x is equal to negative 1 over 2 e to the power of minus 1. So you can say when x is equal to 1, negative 1 over 2 the power of two time two uh, one over two e because that will go in the denominator so it's asking us to find the range of possible values for k so basically this line here is x equals e one over one over minus one over two one let me write it up there so this this line here its equation is x equals negative 1 over 2 e to the power of 1. 1 over 2 e. Okay, so the range of values of k, as we said, um, k must be less than 0 and k must be greater than minus 1 over 2 e. So therefore we can say that k must be between minus 1 over 2 e and 0. So those are the range of values of k for which this line x equals k will cut this curve in two places okay so there's the answer to part b of question number 10 and i think that's the end of the paper that is okay so that's the end of this question and this paper uh, thank you for watching other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that should appear somewhere in this region over here other questions from uh, this particular topic of I guess differentiation from P3 can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.